Hey guys, if you've got an air compressor and are tired of getting on your knees to drain the air valve and are worried about your compressor rusting out, I've got a solution for you coming right up. I found this Qwork electric drain valve on Amazon. It has an arrow to indicate the direction of flow and two adjustments to adjust the frequency in which it goes off and how long it runs. My compressor had a quarter inch drain valve, so I picked up this extension hose to make mounting the electric drain valve easier. For the output side, I was going to use half inch PEX and run it to the exterior of the building. I picked up a half inch by half inch adapter that would screw into the output side of the electric drain valve. I then picked up a piece of two foot PEX that was half inch in diameter that would run to the exterior of the building. Luckily I had some miscellaneous pipe fittings laying around and needed to use a half inch to three eighths inch adapter and then I would adapt the three eighths down to quarter. All the adapters would now allow the quarter inch drain hose to mount onto the drain valve. Since there was really no need for two shutoffs, I removed the shutoff that came on the hose extension. It was now time to add Teflon tape to all the connections. First I screwed the quarter inch into a 3 8 adapter. Then I used open end wrenches to snug it down. It was now time to mount the 3 8 inch adapter into the 3 8 to half inch adapter. The hose already contained its own sealant so I just left it and used it. After tightening it down with a wrench, it was now time to mount it to the electric drain valve. To make things easier, I removed the electromagnetic controller and moved it to the side to keep it from being damaged as well. I added Teflon tape around the threads. Made sure it was on good and tight. and then screwed the half inch side from the hose into the drain valve itself. I then took it over to a bench vise and tightened everything up with wrenches, making sure that the quarter inch input was facing up so that it could mount to the bottom of the compressor. I then put the controller back on top just to admire the finished product. The controller works by using an electromagnetic force that pulls a plunger back and forth. It was now time to work on the compressor. I didn't realize how dirty it was underneath. I had to remove the drain valve from the compressor so I first drain the air and relieve the pressure of the tank. I then grabbed a wrench to start removing the drain valve. Once I had the drain removed, I checked the threads to make sure that they matched. Since everything was a match, it was now time to install the hose into the bottom of the compressor. Through the magic of video editing, I made this look easy, but I was actually going the wrong direction for about five minutes. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. After I figured out the thread direction, I was ready to snug it down with a wrench and then finalize the position to where it would exit the side of the building. Now that that was complete, it was time to drill a hole through the side of the building and to mount it to the post. I measured the inside and it was approximately 18 inches from the corner and four inches from the bottom. I didn't want it to land on a rib, so I drilled it from the outside. I marked the location with a marker and then grabbed my drill and started drilling the hole. I used a one inch step bit and worked my way up to the proper size. I wanted it to be a tight fit. I grabbed the piece of PEX to check the fit 
and I needed to drill it just a little bit bigger. Perfect. Now let's go check out the inside. Looks good to me. Now it's time to crimp the pecs onto the valve. I installed the crimp ring first and then installed the valve into the pecs. Next I used the pecs crimp tool to put a good crimp on the connection. I used denatured alcohol to clean the side of the compressor so that I could mount wire ties to hold the wire. I cleaned it really well with a paper towel to ensure that the wire tie stickies would stick to the metal. I then stuck them to the side of the compressor, added wire ties, and secured the wiring. Now that that was complete, it was time to move to the outside. To complete the outside, I needed a PEX elbow, a cap, and three crimps. I drilled a small hole in the PEX cap. This would allow air and water to escape, but it would keep bugs and dirt daubers out. I cut off the excess PEX that was on the outside of the building and added an elbow. Once again, I used the PEX crimping tool to crimp on the elbow. I then used the cutoff piece to make a smaller turndown. I added the PEX cap and then crimped that on as well. Once that was completed, I inserted it into the elbow and then used the crimping tool once again to do the final connection. I was now ready to give it a test, so I pushed the timer button on the inside to start the compressor. Now that it's got some pressure built up, let's check it to see if it works. Man, that's pretty awesome right there. It's gonna save me from having to get on my hands and knees, get dirty, just to bleed that compressor. The way that I have it wired up, I've got a timer that'll run for two hours, four hours, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, etc. I have that electric valve wired into that timer, so it'll only turn off and on during the period that the timer is engaged. If you haven't seen a video of how I created that, I'll post a link right down here. And I appreciate you watching and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Take care.